Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge and a very happy new year to you. Um, we're gonna be kicking off 2019 with this video where I'm gonna be taking you through some of my favorite apps on my iPad Pro. And as usual, everything is gonna be mentioned in timestamps and categorized by category in the video description and in a pinned comment so you can skip around if you feel like it. But yeah, let's just jump into it. All right, so we'll start by just blitzing through some of the general productivity slash utility apps that I use. Uh, so Microsoft Outlook is my email client of choice. It gets the job done. It's pretty, it's fast, it works. The calendar app that I use is called Fantastical. And the nice thing about that is that it's got good natural language processing, which means I could type meeting with Prof Sprout tomorrow, 5 p.m. at Costa or something like that. And it would just recognize all the different elements of that event and I'd be able to add it to my calendar with a single click. So that's why I like using Fantastical. And the app that I use for my to-do list is called Things. I use this on my Mac and my iPhone as well. And you know, it's just nice. You can split up your to-do lists into different areas of your life. So SixMed is my company, uh, YouTube obviously, and all these different categories of videos that I want to make. Um, and you know, you can add notes to that. And it really makes adding stuff to my to-do list a pleasure, which is good because then it gets out of my head and into the app. And that means I don't have to think about what I need to do. I can just kind of go on the app and see a list in front of me. All right, so let's now talk about the apps that I use for learning and educational stuff. And top of this list is Rosetta Stone, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. And I've been using Rosetta Stone to learn Japanese for the last few months. Uh, I started learning Japanese because I went there on a research program uh, in my second year of medical school and then really enjoyed myself. But then I thought at some point I'd like to do some kind of medical placement in Japan. And it's kind of useful to be able to speak Japanese if you want to do medical stuff there. So one of my uh, New Year's resolutions for 2019 is to try and do a little bit of Japanese every day using the app. So if I'm on the toilet or something, I'll just bust out Rosetta Stone on my phone, or if I'm just sitting at my desk, or if I'm at work and I've got nothing to do for five or 10 minutes, I'll just bust it out on the iPad and just work through some of the lessons. It makes it quite easy. It's quite fun. You get these like little points at the end of every section uh, and it's quite nicely gamified. So using the app doesn't feel like work. If you know, you're interested in learning a language, you can use my coupon code, which will be linked over here and in the video description. And if you use the discount, you can get Rosetta Stone for just five pounds a month. And yeah, it does cost money, but I think if you're serious about learning a language, that's a price well worth paying. Another app I'm gonna be using for learning this year is Quizlet, which is a flashcard app. It's an alternative to Anki. I used to use Anki in medical school, but I've now switched to Quizlet because I think the interface is slightly nicer and it looks a little bit prettier. And I'm gonna be using Quizlet to prepare for some of my postgraduate medical exams. So that's either gonna be the MRCOG, which is the exam for obstetrics and gynecology, or it's gonna be the MRCP, which is the membership of the Royal College of Physicians. I haven't quite decided yet which kind of specialty I wanna go down. Previously, I fully thought I was gonna go for obs and gynae, but now I'm considering maybe going for acute medicine or emergency medicine. So depending on what I decide with that, I'll be using Quizlet as my flashcard app of choice to kind of work towards these postgraduate medical exams. Another app that I use for learning regularly is actually Google Sheets. And I actually use that as a sort of flashcard alternative when I don't wanna go through the rigmarole of making a flashcard on Quizlet or Anki. I just write myself questions on the side of a Google Sheet. So for example, this is my active recall spreadsheet for 2018. And I've got some questions written on the side um, with color coding based on whether I got them right last time I tried it. And then I've got the answers written in white text in, the, in column number B. And then you can see the answer is at the bottom. So if I need to look at the answer, I can see it. And I'll be doing a much more detailed video about exactly how I use Google Sheets in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. <laughs> Let's talk about apps that I use for writing now. And there are five in this category and I actually use all of them on an almost daily basis. The first one is day one, which is what I use for journaling. So I write down stuff about my day and add some photos. Uh, and I also have like a little journal for nice comments. So I screenshot all the nice comments that people have given me and I put them into this. So then when I'm feeling sad, I can just browse through some of the nice comments that you guys have sent. Uh, so day one is my journaling app of choice. If I'm making handwritten notes, then the app I use is Notability and Notability is wonderful. It's very easy to uh, use the Apple Pencil to write stuff by hand. And I also use it to store like textbooks and to store my to-do lists for stuff that I have to do at work each day. And again, I'll do a much more detailed video about that. And I'll put a link up there to a video that I made last year that got quite popular about exactly how I use Notability to take notes when I was a medical student. Thirdly, the app I use for like every day, just typed out notes is Bear Writer. So for example, if I'm planning out uh, a YouTube video or something like that, I'd make uh, a little Bear document. And, and the nice thing about Bear is that it's a very nice interface. It feels very cool and I quite enjoy writing on it. And I also use it to track things like my, my gym workouts. And it's just like a very nice, simple, easy to use markdown based writing app that doesn't have all the bells and whistles that something like Evernote does. Speaking of Evernote, that's another app that I use regularly, but 
I think this year I'm, I'm only really going to be using Evernote for my medical work related stuff. So for example, if I'm preparing for my MRCP or MRCOG exam, then I'll be making my kind of main notes in Evernote, like typed up stuff and like drawing different resources together. Um, but I won't really be using it as a general note taking app like I have in the past because I prefer Bear for that purpose. And finally, an app that I use on a weekly basis is Ulysses, which is what I use to write my weekly email newsletters and my blog posts, which you can check out uh, in the link in the description below. And yeah, it's just really nice to write in. You can write in Markdown, you can write in different styles. And the nice thing about this is that it's a very distraction free writing experience and it's kind of just a pleasure to write on it. So, hey friends. It's how I start all of my emails and uh, you can check out the previous issues of my email newsletter if you feel like it. All right, let's talk about apps that I use for reading now. And on this list, there are three things. Firstly, there's the Kindle app. I don't actually read much on my iPad because I have an actual Kindle for that. And I think the experience of reading a book on the actual Kindle is much, much better than reading that same book on the Kindle app on the iPad. But one thing that's nice about the Kindle app on the iPad is that it's very easy to flick around through books and to see my highlights and notes. So for example, from Atomic Habits, these are all my highlights. There's quite a few highlights. And if I ever need something or need some inspiration for an email or a blog post, I can just kind of quickly browse through my highlights and you know, it's just, it's just right there. So this is kind of my main purpose for having Kindle on my iPad. Secondly, I use Pocket on my iPhone and my iPad to save articles that I want to read, but I don't have time there and then to read. So I save those to my Pocket. And finally, the RSS reader that I use on my iPad is called Unread. So I follow about 50 different blogs. Um, and it's a pain in the bum going on every website and such a complete waste of time. Uh, so something like Unread, just, you know, it's an RSS feed aggregator. It aggregates all the different blog posts that, that I follow. Um, and if I want to, I can sort of sort it by category. So, you know, doctors, medical ethics, minimalism, money, productivity, and, and stuff like that. So that is the RSS reader of choice. All right, three more apps that I wanna mention. Two of them are related to music. One of them is Sight Reading Factory, which is the app that I'm using to practice my sight reading on the piano. And the nice thing about that is that it just randomly generates different pieces of music based on a difficulty level and if you set a key. Um, so I can just select a key, um, a difficulty level, and it would create a random piece of music for me, which then I can use on a piano and kind of play along. And then I can play along with a metronome and all this sort of stuff. And then if I want, I can just refresh it and it generates an entirely new piece of music, which has just been really good for learning sight reading. Although it is more boring than playing through pieces that I already know, but hey, what can you do? Secondly, in the music department, we've got Tabs HD, which I've also got on my iPhone, and it's just the indispensable resource to get guitar tabs or piano chords for pretty much any song in the world. So if I'm doing a jam session with my friends, or if I'm bored at home and I just want to sing a song, uh, I can just type in the name of the song. I don't know, let's Fields of Gold by Sting. Um, and it just tells me the chords, and I can play the chords while singing along and add you know, happiness and joy to my life and hopefully to the lives of my neighbors as well. Finally, the app that I use for editing photos for uh, my Instagram is Lightroom CC. And I usually take photos on my drone or on my phone or on my camera in raw format. And then I transfer them to the iPad using the SD card or using AirDrop or whatever. And then I'll be able to edit them using Lightroom. Um, and Lightroom is like a really nice interface. It feels very natural to edit photos using, using Lightroom and using kind of gesture controls and using the Apple Pencil uh, to change things like contrast exposure, this, that, and the other. So this, for example, is the River Nile from my trip to Sudan from a few days ago. And this is the before edited version. This is the after edited version, having changed a few of the colors and up the contrast a little bit. So yeah, Lightroom is the app that I use for photo editing. All right, so that was a roundup of some of my favorite apps for the iPad for 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.